بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم our first integral is x from 0 to infinity 1 over 1 minus x squared plus x to the 4 the square of the logarithm of x squared over 1 minus x squared plus x to the 4 let's start by doing the change of variables y equal to 1 over x we replace each x in the integrand by 1 over y dx is equal to minus dy over y squared when x tends to 0 from above y tends to infinity when x tends to infinity y tends to 0 we can use this minus sign here to get our integral from 0 to infinity and this is dx without the minus sign we multiply numerator and denominator by y to the power 4 y to the power 4 divided by y squared, that's y squared. In the denominator, we get y to the 4 minus y squared plus 1. Inside the logarithm, we also multiply by y to the 4 divided by y to the 4. We get y squared to over 1 minus y squared plus y to the 4. Replacing y by x, this integral can be written as... We can write down omega as the arithmetic mean of these two integrals. We get the square of the logarithm, 1 half 1 plus x squared divided by 1 minus x squared plus x to the 4. The argument of the logarithm can be written as 1 over x to the 4 over x squared, which is x squared, minus x squared over x squared, that's minus 1, plus 1 over x squared. We also divide the numerator and denominator here by x squared. We get 1 half, 1 plus 1 over x squared upstairs. Downstairs, we get x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 1. Let's do the substitution. t equal to x minus 1 over x. This means that t squared is x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 2. If x tends to plus infinity, t tends to plus infinity. If x tends to 0 from above, t tends to minus infinity. dt is 1 plus 1 over x squared dx. This one half is here. 1 plus 1 over x squared dx is dt. x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 1. This is t squared plus 1. We also have a square of the logarithm of 1 over 1 plus t squared. Note that log 1 over 1 plus t squared. All squared is minus log 1 plus t squared. All squared. So we get the square of the logarithm of 1 plus t squared. Because the integrand here is an even function, one half the integral from minus infinity to infinity is equal to the integral t from 0 to infinity. Let's do another substitution. t equal to 10 u. 1 plus t squared is sec u squared. dt is sec squared u du. We have the logarithm of sec squared u all squared. That's the square of minus 2 log cosine u, which is 4, the square of log cosine u. Our integral of interest, big omega, is 4 integral u from 0 to pi over 2, the square of log cosine u. Recall that for z1 and z2 with real parts strictly greater than 0, data of z1 and z2 is 2 times the integral u from 0 to pi over 2, sine u to the power 2z1 minus 1, cosine u to the power 2z2 minus 1. Let's replace z1 by 1 half and z2 by eta plus 1 over 2. Eta is non-negative. 2 times 1 half minus 1, that's 0. This term is equal to 1. The power of cosine is eta plus 1 minus 1, that's eta. Data of 1 half and eta plus 1 over 2 is 2, integral u from 0 to pi over 2, cosine u raised to the power eta. If we differentiate with respect to eta once, we get the integral with the extra term log cosine u. If we differentiate another time, we get another log cosine u. The second derivative with respect to eta of data 1 half eta plus 1 over 2 is 2, integral u from 0 to pi over 2, cosine u to the power eta. Then we have the square of log cosine u. Omega is equal to the same integral, but without this term. Also, there is a 4 here rather than 2. Thus, omega is equal to 2, the limit as eta tends to 0 of the second derivative of beta of 1 half and eta plus 1 over 2 with respect to eta. Beta of z1 and z2 is gamma z1 times gamma z2 over gamma z1 plus z2. This beta function is gamma of 1 half, which is the square root of pi, gamma of eta plus 1 over 2. Downstairs, we have gamma of the sum, which is eta over 2 plus 1. Differentiate once with respect to eta. Let's apply the product rule. We have gamma of eta plus 1 over 2 times 1 over gamma eta over 2 plus 1. The first derivative of this product with respect to eta is the first derivative of gamma, gamma prime of eta 1 plus 1 over 2 times 1 half times 1 over gamma eta over 2 plus 1 plus gamma eta plus 1 over 2. Then the derivative of this part, which is minus 1 over the square of gamma eta over 2 plus 1. And because eta here is multiplied by 1 half, by the chain rule, we get also 1 half. 1 half, 1 half, and 2 go away. We can take this ratio of gamma functions as a common factor. Here we have gamma prime eta plus 1 over 2 over gamma eta plus 1 over 2 minus gamma prime eta over 2 plus 1 over gamma eta over 2 plus 1. This quantity here can be written as the ratio of the gamma functions. And this part is the logarithmic derivative of gamma eta plus 1 over 2. This ratio here is the logarithmic derivative of gamma eta over 2 plus 1. This is di gamma eta plus 1 over 2. That one is di gamma of eta over 2 plus 1. 
differentiating again with respect to eta. The first derivative of this ratio of gamma functions is the same ratio times one half times a difference of di gamma functions. So the first term that we have here is one half gamma eta plus one over two over gamma eta over two plus one times this bracket squared plus the ratio of the gamma functions. And then we differentiate this bracket. We get the tri gamma function. Tri gamma of z is the derivative of di gamma of z. And because we have eta over two, we also get one half, which is written outside here. We take the limit as eta tends to zero. This gamma function becomes gamma of one half, which is the square root of pi times the square root of pi. We get pi. The gamma function downstairs becomes gamma of one, which is one. We also get di gamma of one half minus di gamma of one all squared plus tri gamma of one half minus tri gamma of one. I show now that this difference of di gamma functions is two log two. Let's start with the integral x from zero to one of x to the alpha over one plus x. The real part of alpha is greater than minus one. Writing down one over one plus x as summation g from zero to infinity minus x to the g, and then integrating term by term, we get summation g from zero to infinity minus one to the g integral x from zero to one x to the alpha plus g. This integral is one over alpha plus g plus one. We can write down the summand as the difference of two terms. In the first one, we replace j by two j. And in the second, we replace j by 2j plus 1. We multiply numerator and denominator here and there by 1 half. We add and subtract 1 half over j plus 1. Di gamma of z is equal to minus small gamma, Euler Mascaroni constant, plus summation, j from 0 to infinity, 1 over j plus 1 minus 1 over j plus z. This sum applied to these two terms is 1 half di gamma of alpha over 2 plus 1 plus small gamma. We have a minus sign. The sum applied to these two terms here gives us one half times di gamma of alpha over two plus one over two plus small gamma. Small gamma minus small gamma is zero. We end up with the difference of these two di gamma functions multiplied by one half. Since our interest is di gamma of one half minus di gamma of one, we set alpha to zero. Di gamma of one minus di gamma of one half is two times the integral x from zero to one, one over one plus x. This integral is 2 log 1 plus x. When we use the limits of integration, we get 2 log 2. This difference here is minus 2 log 2. And when we square, we get 4 times the square of log 2. To obtain big omega, we also need to find tri gamma of 1 half minus tri gamma of 1. The polygamma function of order m has this integral representation, which means that we can write down tri gamma of z as minus integral t from 0 to 1, t to the z minus 1, log t divided by 1 minus t. This difference can be written as integral t from 0 to 1 log t times 1 minus t to the minus half over 1 minus t. Let's do the substitution. t equal to u squared. dt is 2u du. Log t becomes log u squared, which is 2 log u. And this fraction becomes 1 minus u to the minus 1 over 1 minus u squared. 2u log u squared du becomes 4 log u du. Multiplying numerator and denominator here by u, we get u minus 1 over 1 minus u squared. 1 minus u squared is 1 minus u times 1 plus u. u minus 1 over 1 minus u is equal to minus 1. We end up with minus 4 integral u from 0 to 1 log u over 1 plus u. Using the same Taylor expansion like here, we write 1 over 1 plus u as summation g from 0 to infinity minus u to the power g. We integrate term by term. We have minus 4 summation g from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the g integral u from 0 to 1 u to the g log u. We can make use of this standard result. To get this integral, integral x from 0 to 1, x to the a, log x to the b, is minus 1 to the b, gamma of b plus 1 over a plus 1 to the power b plus 1. In our case, log u is raised to the power 1. So the numerator is minus gamma of 1, which is minus 1. The denominator is g plus 1 squared. Tri gamma of 1 half minus tri gamma of 1 is 4 times summation g from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the g over g plus 1 squared. And this summation is 1 half zeta of 2 because this summation is zeta of two minus double the sum of the reciprocals of the squares of the positive even integers, which is equal to one fourth of zeta of two. Since zeta of two is equal to pi squared over six, this difference is equal to pi squared over three. Omega is equal to pi over two times two log two squared plus pi squared over three. This is two pi log two squared plus pi cubed over six. Our second integral is x from zero to one, the di logarithm of one plus x squared over two, divided by 1 plus x squared. Our first step is to use this friend from the previous page again to obtain an integral representation for the di logarithm. Specifically, 
if the absolute value of x is less than 1 and n is a positive integer, we have integral t from 0 to 1, x log t to the power n over 1 minus xt. 1 over 1 minus xt is summation, j from 0 to infinity, xt to the power j. Integrating term by term, we get summation over non-negative integer j of x to the j plus 1, integral t from 0 to 1, t to the j times log t to the power n. According to this result here, the integral is minus 1 to the n, gamma of n plus 1, and since n is a positive integer, gamma of n plus 1 is the vectorial of n. Downstairs, we get j plus 1 to the power n plus 1. If we replace j by j minus 1, the sum now is over positive integer j. We can take minus 1 to the n and n factorial outside the sum. x to the j plus 1 becomes x to the j. The denominator becomes j to the n plus 1. If n is equal to 1, we have integral t from 0 to 1, x log t over 1 minus x t dt equal to minus summation j from 1 to infinity, x to the j over j squared. This is the dialogarithm of x. If we account for this minus sign, we write down the dialogarithm of x as integral t from 0 to 1, x log t over t x minus 1. The dialogarithm of 1 plus x squared over 2, given this integral representation, is integral t from 0 to 1, 1 plus x squared over 2 log t over 1 plus x squared over 2 times t all minus 1. The integrand already has 1 over 1 plus x squared. These two terms go away. If we multiply numerator and denominator by 2, we get log t over 1 plus x squared times t minus 2. Interchanging the order of integration, now we have an outer integral t from 0 to 1, log t. Then we have an inner integral with respect to x, x from 0 to 1, 1 over t x squared minus between brackets 2 minus t. If we take minus t as a common factor, we get minus integral t from 0 to 1 log t over t, integral x from 0 to 1, 1 over the square root of 2 minus t, over t all squared minus x squared. The antiderivative of 1 over a squared minus x squared is 1 over a, the inverse hyperbolic tangent of x over a. Applying this result to the inner integral, we get 1 over the square root of 2 minus t over t, the inverse hyperbolic tangent of x over the square root of t minus t over t. When x is 0, this is equal to 0. When x is 1, we get the inverse hyperbolic tangent of the square root of t over 2 minus t. When this part here is multiplied by t, we get the square root of t times 2 minus t. Let's now do the change of variables. t equal to 1 minus cosine theta. t times 2 minus t becomes 1 minus cosine theta times 1 plus cosine theta. That's 1 minus cosine squared theta which is sine squared theta. So this square root becomes sine theta. Log t becomes log 1 minus cosine theta. Square root of t over 2 minus t becomes this square root, which is the tangent of theta over 2. dt is equal to sine theta d theta. When t is 1, cosine theta is 0, so theta is by over 2. When t is 0, cosine theta is 1, so theta is 0. After eliminating sine theta upstairs and downstairs, we get minus integral theta from 0 to pi over 2, log 1 minus cosine theta, the inverse hyperbolic tangent of 10 theta over 2. Let's now do the tangent half angle substitution, u equal to 10 theta over 2. Cosine theta is replaced by 1 minus u squared over 1 plus u squared. d theta is replaced by 2 du over 1 plus u squared. When theta is 0, u is 0. When theta is pi over 2, u is 10 pi over 4, which is 1. The argument of the logarithm is 2u squared over 1 plus u squared minus 2 times the inverse hyperbolic tangent function can be written as log 1 minus u over 1 plus u. One more change of variables, z equal to 1 minus u over 1 plus u. So u is 1 minus z over 1 plus z. du is minus 2 dz over 1 plus z squared. This part becomes log z. This is 2u squared over 1 plus u squared. If we multiply upstairs and downstairs by 1 plus z squared, we get 2 times 1 minus z all squared. In the denominator, we get 1 plus z squared plus 1 minus z squared. Expanding this, we get 2 plus 2z two squared. The argument of this logarithm can be written as 1 minus z all squared over 1 plus z squared. Similarly, 2 over the product of these two quantities yields 1 plus z squared in the denominator. Defining d to be integral z from 0 to 1 log z log 1 minus z over 1 plus z squared, and defining c to be integral z from 0 to 1 log z log 1 plus z squared over 1 plus z squared, we can write down this integral as 2d minus c, because this logarithm can be written as 2 log 1 minus z minus log 1 plus z squared. Integrals c and d, together with integrals a and b, were the focus of investigation in a previous video. 
we obtained these three results. D appears in the third result, which can be used to write 2D as 2B plus boy cubed over 16 minus G, which is Catalan's constant, times log 2. The first result involves integral C. We can write minus C as 2G log 2 plus 2B minus A. Our integral of interest is 2D minus C. So we can add these two expressions to get that 2D minus C is equal to G log 2 plus 4B minus A plus boy cubed over 16. The second result here helps us finish off the problem. 4B plus boy cubed over 16 is nothing but A itself, and A minus A is 0. 2D minus C, which is the integral X from 0 to 1, the dilogarithm of 1 plus X squared over 2, over 1 plus X squared is equal to Catalan's constant times the natural logarithm of 2. 